All right. Once again, thank you everyone for joining us for Wait, Wait, Don't Poke Me, the Diabetes Game Show. And Stacy, I think I'm going to just let you take over. Um, Stacy has posted the link to the bingo card, which you're going to want to do in the chat. So if everyone could download that as she teased this up. And then Stacy, when you say go, I will start the video. I'm going to mute and hide my video and turn it over to you. Jeff, thank you so much. I love doing this show every year and I cannot wait to do it live again in July at Friends for Life in Orlando. So I have posted the bingo link. It is not at all mandatory. If you just want to watch, we're going to play a video. This is a pre-taped game show, and I'm going to explain a little bit more in the video. But if you want to play along during this session, the bingo card will let you do that. There's a link in the chat. You can print it out and exit off or highlight it however you want to do bingo. You can also play online if you are adept enough with a different screen. Again, it's just for fun. And post in here when you have bingo. We're going to play for Diagonal, full card, we'll go from there. There are prizes. However, it's a little bit difficult to monitor as we go. So the prizes are gonna be given at random to people who attend. And we were just having a conversation about this um, behind the scenes here. And we think the easiest way to do this is, and I'll remind you of this as we go through, is just email me, stacy at diabetes-connections.com. I will put that in the chat in just a moment, but email me. You don't even have to send an email. You can just put subject, friends for life, prize, bingo, hey lady. If it's from today, I'll know that it's you wanting to be eligible for the prizes. Quick introduction. I'm Stacey Sims. I'm the host of Diabetes Connections, which is a long running podcast. I'm also the author of The World's Worst Diabetes Mom. And I found Friends for Life in 2010. My son was diagnosed with type one right before he turned two back in 2006. And they had one of their regional conferences here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I was blown away by the information just incredible. I learned so much. I learned what I didn't know that day, and I learned how important the community was for me. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit more at the end. Um, but again, we'll put more in the chat. Please open it up and take a look if you haven't. But again, check out the bingo card. Email me if you want to be eligible for, oh, what are the prizes? Great question. The prizes are a paperback copy of The World's Worst Diabetes Mom, an audiobook copy of The World's Worst Diabetes Mom, and two $25 gift certificates to Amazon. So some stocking stuffers perhaps there. All right, without further ado, let's play the game. Jeff, take it away. Welcome everybody to Wait, Wait, Don't Poke Me, the diabetes game show. If you have heard of the NPR show, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, we apologize in advance. We have based our version off of that, but we do apologize to them. I am Stacey Sims. I'm the host of Diabetes Connections, a twice weekly podcast. I am the author of The World's Worst Diabetes Mom. My son, Benny, was diagnosed right before he turned two. He is almost 17 now, and I love doing this show. We're going to meet some fun people who are performed great services for the diabetes community. They are not performing those services today. They are just here to have some fun with me. So without further ado, let me bring on our panelists for this year's Wait, Wait, Don't Poke Me. They are Matt Point, Kyle Banks, and Naya Grant. Thank you all so much for playing. I so appreciate it. Thank you, Stacey. Yeah, thank you. Thanks oh, for my having goodness. Us. They've heard the show before and they still came on. So boy, do we appreciate that. Um, let's, let's hear a little bit about you guys though, before we jump right in. Matt, tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, so my name is Matt Point. Um, I work full-time at Children with Diabetes as the Director of Advancement. So I work all, with all of our fabulous sponsors, our donors. Um, I actually also manage the Conference Scholarship Program, which is my favorite part of the position. So um, I always get to enjoy calling and telling families they're going to come join us in Florida, oh, wherever great. we are. Um, I am married to someone with type 1. My husband, Brian, has lived with type 1 since he was um, 15. So about 18 years now. So yeah, that's my, uh, my uh, connection. So I came to Friends for Life in Orlando as a um, significant other of a person with type one and um, didn't realize how much I would enjoy it. So wow. here I am uh, 10 years later as a staff member. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Very cool. Yeah. Matt, thank you so much. Kyle, tell me about yourself. You've been on the show before, but for those who didn't meet you that way. Yes. Hello. Hello. I'm <laughs> 
Kyle Banks. I'm an actor and singer, um, also founder of Kyla Cares, which is a foundation that focuses on diabetic technology and providing access for people of color living with type 1 diabetes. I've been living with type 1 diabetes for six years now. Um, my diversity is coming up soon in November. Um, yeah, and I'm super excited to be here. Play oh, we're this game. thrilled, thrilled to have you. Yeah, everybody, everybody says that till we get into the game. We'll see. We'll see how it feels everybody is. And Naya Grant, thank you so much for being here. Your cat Wonton is probably running around somewhere in the background. He is. He he might make an appearance today. We'll we'll see. Um, but <laughs> my name's Naya Grant. Um, I have lived with diabetes for almost 15 years i think um i was diagnosed in florida um at disney it was a whole fun event um and one of the things that i enjoy most is being an advocate for people in the diabetes community especially the brown parts of the diabetes community which sometimes get um overlooked as well as the lgtb folks because we are here we're queer we're not going anywhere <laughs> so you were diagnosed right around the same time as benny probably uh the uh, exact ago. date is march 10th 2007. all right sort of like a little bit after him but at disney world yes oh my goodness i don't know why i'd never heard that story before did you at least get home to get your diagnosis or were you in i'm no, sorry I got off track here. at the hospital in florida um we thought it was food poisoning because i had some cream soup at disney and this was long before i realized how serious they take food service and and everything there um so it, after that it was oh it's not it's not food poisoning it's diabetes okay wow wow all right well usually uh at this point we're going to jump into trivia but i do have to say i should have said this at the beginning the prizes that we give out here for our panelists because we're going to keep score there will be a winner we're going to do a donation to the children with diabetes fund matt maybe you can help me figure out specifically how to do that as you mentioned the scholarship so we're going to do that in our winning panelists name we're going to be adding up some points as we go so i will i will be the gatekeeper and the scorekeeper um which usually means somebody else should back me up but we'll do the best <laughs> we can <laughs> that's awesome yeah so i'm really excited about that um let's go ahead and jump into our trivia you each have five questions and this year i have added a virtual uh, photo component to this so chosen by random matt you are going to go first okay i'm ready i'm ready all right well our first question this is like ripped from the headlines matt here we go yes all right this is adam duvall he was diagnosed in his early 20s with type 1. he is now a star player for the atlanta braves as we are taping this we're actually in the middle of the world series it's still going on and in the last game played before we taped duvall hit a grand slam oh. okay duvall told a reporter that off the field his favorite low blood sugar treatment is i will give you a choice here matt okay is it is it oreos and milk pixie sticks and coffee or marshmallows and grape juice? Hmm. I'm gonna go with marshmallows and grape juice because that sounds like the worst combination. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually Oreos and milk. Oh. Oreos really? and milk. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, more logical. I just. <laughs> I applaud you for going for the disgusting one. I, you I, know. Does anybody here, do you know, nobody treats, I mean, Oreos and milk is tough enough. I would think grape juice and, ugh. all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next question. Miss America Sierra Sanderson won an Idaho Entrepreneur Challenge for creating what business? Now, of course, she famously wore her insulin pump in the Miss America pageant. And that's a lovely picture of her there, but she has moved on. Is she printing 3D slugs? Printing 3D, the actual animal slugs. Mobile app to streamline healthcare payments. Did she create that or did she create a bed wedge? She won the Idaho Entrepreneur Challenge. I'm gonna say bed wedge. It's actually 3D printed slugs. Why? Have you not seen <laughs> the practical <laughs> application of that? They are so cute. <laughs> All right, I'll have to throw up a picture of those if I can they're find them. They're not cute on my porch. <laughs> no, they're definitely not cute on the porch. All right, well, Matt, you can still rally here. Okay, earlier this year, Bigfoot Biomedical got FDA approval for its insulin pen and CGM system. What's it called? Is it called Bigfoot Sasquatch? Bigfoot Unity? 
or Bigfoot autonomy? I'm going to go with autonomy, I think. It's unity. Oh, yes. Autonomy is the name of their pump system that they're. Oh, I knew. I knew I'd heard it before. I know. These are very tricky. Very tricky. Mm. Very tricky. All right. You've got two more questions. We'll see if you can rally here. April Blackwell has T1D. She writes the blog Nerdy April's Space Adventures. Where does she work? NASA. I just yes. interviewed her. She. <laughs> <laughs> you did? You just interviewed her? Yeah, I hosted her screenside chat about her job. Oh, do you not love her? She's great. She works at NASA, specifically Mission Control for the International Space Station. And that big circle there is the NASA emblem that I had to <laughs> knock out. That's All right. Awesome. Excellent. All right. You're on the board. You're on the board, Matt. All right. Finally. The next question. The phrase Walmart insulin got a change in meaning this year when the superstore signed an agreement with Novo Nordisk to sell branded Humalog. What's the store brand at Walmart? Is it rely on members mark or up and up? Um, rely on. <laughs> it is rely on. Excellent. All right. Way to go. You got two points on the board. Woo. Yes. Better okay. than zero. Definitely. <laughs> hey, and there's a long way to go. We've got other parts of the, the, the show to get mm. in there. Okay. So now, Kyle and Anaya, you kind of know what we're dealing with here. Some of these uh -oh. are kind of goofy. Some of these are kind of fun. All right. So, Naya, you are up next. Oh, dear. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> I, I hesitate to put this one on the board, this photo. This might give it away. So we'll do it in the middle of the question. Ultra athlete Don Muchow was diagnosed with type 1 in 1972 and told he should never exercise because it was too dangerous. In 2004, he said the heck way that he started running. And this year at age 59, he completed the first ever 2,700 mile mouse to mouse run. What the heck is that? What is a mouse to mouse run? It's Disney to Disney. <laughs> Cali to Orlando? Yes, I Disney World to Disneyland. <laughs> Excellent. Whoa. All right, very good. Yeah, I don't, I like Disney, but I'm not running across the country. He was amazing. I can't believe he did that. Such a great guy. All right. Next question for you, Naya. Dr. Drew Weissman is part of the team behind the mRNA research used in some COVID vaccines. Cool. What is, yeah. What is his type one connection? Is it his childhood pediatrician? Is it his sister or is it himself? Um, part of me wants to say himself because it looks like he's got something in his pocket, but I'm going to go with his sister. It is himself, and you were right. I realize as I'm sharing the photo, he's, you can see his insulin pump. Jeez. Is that yes. a Medtronic? That's yes. why I know what it is. It looks All so right. from here. Yeah. Isn't that I cool? thought it was a pager, like the one that's in the hospital, like the big phone one. Right. Okay, next question for you. Diabetes Mine this year wanted to test several insulin vial holders, you know, protective holders. So how did they do it? They had to test it and try to break the bottles. Did they drop vials from a high point in an airplane hangar? Did they run the vials over with a car? Or did they give the vials to a toddler for the afternoon? <laughs> That's a hard question. Um, I want it to be the toddlers. because. That... <laughs> Um, I, you know what? I'm going to go with the toddlers, even though I think it's number two. I think that it's uh, that's very irresponsible of you because <laughs> a toddler could very get, get, get cut. That was a trick question. It's mm -hmm. actually number one. They dropped them from a very high height in an airplane hangar. Okay. So follow-up question, because yes. now I, for the science on this, where there's an actual insulin in the vials or was it just... Do they pull the insulin out and put saline in? Because that's a waste of insulin. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they did what you said. I know the insulin. I remember reading the article. They did not waste insulin. They took a whole okay. paragraph or two to explain why it was on the up and up. Okay. But they had to put Fair some enough. liquid in there, <laughs> right? To make sure that it was weighted in some way. Right. Because otherwise there's no point in the test. Right. So I don't know. We've been, I shouldn't say anything. We've never had a bottle break. I've had some other crazy things happen, but knock mm -hmm. on wood. I broke one. <laughs> <laughs> We knocked one out of the fridge. <laughs> Slipped right out of my hands on a tile floor. Uh, <laughs> oh, all right. Next question for you, Naya. Medtronic got the CE mark, that is European approval, for its new Guardian 4 sensor. Doesn't need to be calibrated. Guardian 4 is the commercial name. What was it called in-house? Here are your choices. Was okay. it called the Athena sensor, the Zeus sensor, or the Jupiter sensor? 
I'm going to go with Athena. It was Zeus. It was Zeus. <laughs> Don't you wish they stuck with those kinds of names rather than the numbers? Yes. I, love it. I always get mixed up on the numbers. All right. Now, this one is kind of a silly question. But what was I going to ask about this? Everybody knows that this happened. All right. Huge moment for visibility just a few weeks ago. Supermodel Kate Moss's daughter, Lila Grace Moss, walked a fashion show with her Omnipod on full display. She looked absolutely amazing, of course. What was the show called? It had a nickname. It was a combo Fendi and Versace show. I know we're all very much into the high fashion. So I'll give you multiple choice. Okay. Was it Fendachi, Verdi, or Fenver? This was a real thing they called this fashion show. I think it was the second one because I vaguely remember seeing that. Verdi? It was actually Fendachi. Yes, but Ooh. I think that's all ridiculous and made up. So, yes. Yeah. Very silly, very silly stuff. All right. Well, the good news is, Matt. You're in the lead. The bad news is you only got two right. <laughs> I only got one right. So Kyle, you can swoop in and take it all. Yes. Yes. All right. Or I'll prove that I'm really the bad guy. Well, these are not real. I mean, honestly, these are real trivia <laughs> questions. This is a little ridiculous, but we have fun. What am I going to ask you guys, right? All right, so here we go. In 2014, Sebastian Sassville ran across Canada. This is from that time. You can kind of see the, the animus sticker on him. I think he's got, yeah, he's got an animus sticker. He ran across Canada, adding to a list of achievements like climbing Mount Everest and completing a brutal race across the Sahara. This year, he repeated the Canada crossing, but he didn't run it. How did he get across? What mode of transport, Kyle? Mm. Uh, did he use a bike? He did. He biked his way across. Yes. He biked it. He I would have said something like dog sled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about choices. I was like bike, dog sled, hoverboard, right? <laughs> Eric Church won Entertainer of the Year at last year's Country Music Awards. What is his connection with Type 1? Oh, Matt, do you know? Don't say. I do know. Do, do I get choices? Sure, we'll give you choices. Is it his, <laughs> is it his mother? Is it his sister? Or is it his daughter? I'm going to go with his daughter. It's his mother. It's his mother. Yeah, his mother has type one. Matt, do you know them? Uh, I met them at a work event in the past <laughs> that you were at and you were speaking. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Were you in North Carolina for that? I was in Charlotte. I met you without knowing I met you. Yeah. I to talk about that. I was like, that was several years ago. Hmm. <laughs> That's so funny. It's what a small world. Yeah. I, you know, it's, I've talked to Eric Church a couple of times. I really want to talk to his mom and I want to talk to him about his mom for the podcast, but we'll get there. We'll get there. They live outside of Charlotte. They live, like, in the, I was, they live in the mountains. So. Mm. All right, so you're moving on for the trivia. Sorry about that, Kyle. Uh -huh. Tandem is the first company, the first pump company, to offer remote hardware updates. During development, what was it called? Was it Project Athena, <laughs> Project Jupiter, or Project Odyssey? Project Odyssey? Yes, it was Project Odyssey. Did you know that, or was that a guess? I remember reading about this. Yeah. What's really interesting about that is it was at the time, if you go back and look, uh, people were pretty upset about it. They were, they didn't think it would work. They were concerned about costs. Like it was pretty controversial at the time. And now it's just part of the product. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to go back and look at that stuff. All right. In an interview with me earlier this year, the CEO of Afreza, inhalable insulin, jokingly compared the makeup of the product to what dessert? Was it Jello Jigglers, Dippin' Dots, or Seven Layer Cake? Ooh. <laughs> All delicious. <laughs> <laughs> A wide variety of options. <laughs> I want to go with Dippin' Dots. It is Dippin' Dots. He says that's yes! kind of the consistency of it looks like. Oh, my God. Kyle is swooping ahead. All right, one more question. One more question. All right. We are marking 100 years since the discovery of how to isolate and use insulin. Sir Frederick Banting is credited with the idea and worked with a team to make it possible. Where, where in his house did Sir Banting have this idea? Naya, shh, don't say. Mm. <laughs> I'm not giving you multiple choice for this one. Where in his house? The bathroom. 
It was not the bathroom, but that's a great uh, guess. It was in his bedroom. He God. woke up in the middle of the night and scribbled a note, and that was that. All right, Kyle, you are ahead. You have three. Matt has two. Naya has one. Woo. Yes. All right. <laughs> quick break. Everybody get a drink of water if you need one. I certainly need one. And then we are going to bring on our contestant for this part of the show. This is our Bluff the Listener segment where you panelists have to try to fool our contestant. And our contestant this year is Benny. Hi. <laughs> My son, Benny. <laughs> so Benny, you are playing for an additional charitable donation to children with diabetes. If you get so this- money to myself, okay. Right. <laughs> Not children with diabetes, children with diabetes. Uh, okay. <laughs> the organization. So if you get it right, we will we will make that uh, donation in your name. So the way this works is every uh, one of our panelists is going to tell you a story that's been in the news, and then only one of the stories is actually for real. So you have to listen to the stories and then tell us what is real. So our subject, our subject this year is diabetes in the wild, but it's a little bit different than what that usually means because this time around, we're gonna talk about Olympic athletes. We just had the delayed Olympics this year. So we're gonna talk about Olympic athletes with type one who have encountered actual wildlife. All right, so we're gonna go, I know it's ridiculous. I'm gonna take everybody. Yeah, a very specific diabetes in the wild, type one Olympic athletes who encountered wildlife. So we're going to start with Naya and everybody else can take a pause. Wait. <laughs> Bye, Benny. Okay, so we're going to start with Naya and everybody else can take a pause. I'm going to take myself off as well. And Naya, start. All right. Four-time Olympian and 15-time national champion skier Chris Freeman spends most of his time training outside, but had a wildlife encounter inside. While training for the 2010 Olympics, Freeman rented a house in Juneau, Alaska, where black bears are very common and usually just leave people alone. However, one afternoon, Chris came home and left his door slightly open by mistake. Chris heard a noise and turned around to see the black bear walking in the kitchen. Chris grabbed his ski poles and waved them around. The bear fled through the door, but it ripped off the frame on its way out. Local authorities credited Freeman with scaring the bear without getting physical with it. Chris Freeman took a day off from training, but competed his next Olympics with those very same ski poles. <laughs> all right. So, Benny, did you hear all that? Mm -hmm. All right. Chris Freeman, who you met when you were a little boy. I was about to say, I think I met him. <laughs> you met him at Friends for Life. All right, Coach Chris Freeman scaring the bear away with the ski poles without getting physical all right that's story number one all right matt oops let me get my paper away all right matt tell us your story all right are we ready okay so charlotte drury was training for the 2020 summer olympics when she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes she got right back into training and was able to attend the delayed games this year in tokyo Charlotte has dual citizenship with Sweden, and three years ago while visiting, Drury's car hit a moose. She wasn't badly injured, and the moose ran off, which is apparently pretty common. Drury was worried about the animal, but authorities said there was nothing that could be done. However, Sweden sets up 30 cameras every year to record the annual moose migration in the country. A sharp-eyed viewer saw a large moose limping along. Wildlife viewers were able to not only capture and heal it, but identify it was indeed the moose Drury hit because of residue from her car. The moose is now nicknamed Bounce after her trampoline skills and is safely at a wildlife preserve. All right. And if if you don't, if you're not familiar with Charlotte Drury, she is a trampoline gymnast. And that is an amazing sport. I did they did not televise her portion of the Olympics, and I'm still very disappointed with that wanted to watch that part. All right, we have one more story of an Olympian with type one. So Kyle, take us through it. Yes, yes, yes. Gold medal winner Gary Hall Jr. was the very first person to compete in any Olympics with type one diabetes. A few years later in 2006, Gary and his sister, Bibi, were spearfishing off the Florida Keys. After a successful catch, they were on their way back to the boat when they were attacked by a shark. 
Gary Hall punched and kicked the shark until it rolled off of him. But then when it went toward his sister, uh, while Gary was wrestling with the shark, BB had taken time to reload his spear gun and was able to shoot it. The injured shark swam off and the Hall siblings made it safely back to their boat. BB suffered a shark bite in her arm. Gary later said after they were both safe that he was jealous because of quote, that's the coolest scar to get. All right. Then we have Olympian Gary Hall punching a shark, which his sister took care of. So Benny, those are your choices. You've got the first person with type one to win an Olympic medal, Gary Hall punching a shark. You've got Chris Freeman, the only endurance athlete with type one of the Olympics, waving his ski poles around. Or you've got Charlotte Drury, the trampoline gymnast who hit a moose. What say you? Um, I'm looking for the one that's true, right? You're looking for the one that's true. Oh. <laughs> the moose one just seems just way too far out there. Um, and Chris, mm, mm. I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna go with uh, Kyle's story about the shark. You are correct. It huh? was indeed Gary Hall. <laughs> I'm so who, good at this. Who punched, <laughs> you're so modest, who punched and kicked the shark, and then his sister was able to take care of it. That's a crazy story. I think the giveaway for the, for the, um, the Chris Freeman was using the poles to ski in the Olympics the next day, <laughs> or the next time he competed. <laughs> oh, well, well done, all of you. Did you guys, uh, when you read your stories, did you think this is ridiculous? I mean, Gary Hall is a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of agree with him. Like that is like the coolest scar you could get. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like that's I mean, the most part of the whole story. To be honest, have you all seen the video with him swimming, like with concrete attached to him? No. Oh my yeah. god, he's it's, amazing. This, this guy is so ridiculous. <laughs> did you meet him in July, Kyle? I did. He's so cool. We we should say, if it's not obvious, the other two stories are completely made up. There are elements within that are real. Um, like Charlotte Julie does have dual citizenship, but nothing else is real. I don't want to get in trouble. I love the car residue on the moose, though. Right? Oh, <laughs> the cameras. I didn't make that part up. They have some like 30 cameras that track the moose. So that part is real. Well, Benny, thank you so much for being such a of wonderful course. contestant. We'll be making a donation your name to the Children with Diabetes Scholarship Fund or wherever Matt tells us to put it. So thanks for playing along, kiddo. Awesome. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll see Bye. you soon. We'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Clean your room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Very well done, all of you. All right. So we are moving on. Uh, Kyle gets a point for making. Uh, how do I say that? Kyle gets a point for Benny getting a point. I don't know. But the uh, panelist who correct. kind of wins that one gets a point, too. So he's shooting ahead here. But we still have one more section where you guys could catch up. It is our limerick challenge. So the topic here is diabetes in TV and movies. Now I'm gonna read the limerick. Okay. One of you, I will tell you which one, don't shout out the answers. One of you will finish the limerick. I apologize, I am not a poet. These rhymes might be a little sideways, but I think you'll get the gist. So um, all three of these movies or TV shows made news in 2021, and they were credited with actually pretty decent portrayals of type 1 diabetes. All right, so we're going to go with Kyle first this time. Ooh. Mix it up. All right, you ready? Here we go. Ready. Okay, all I can tell you about this is that, well, you know what? I'm not going to give you a hint. We'll see. You don't even need a hint. All right. <clears throat> all right. Topic is diabetes in TV and movies. This disaster is natural, not planned. The family must make a stand. The film was a hit. The sequel, Green Lit. Gerard Butler returns for the second. I think Matt knows. Oh, Thank darn. You. And Naya knows too? <gasps> oh, no. Is there a steal? Well, what, no, why am, I, why am I the only one that don't know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's a movie. That's the hint. A movie. A movie. When did it come? Stand. Stand. No. Oh. All right, Matt. We're gonna get. We're gonna give it to you for the steal. We just Freeman. instituted the new reel. What was it? 
Greenland. Greenland, yes, Greenland, written by Chris Farling. Um, so, what's his, not Stacey, um, Carrie. Yes. <laughs> Carrie so by Chris Farling, who is married to Carrie from the Six Until Me blog. Mm. So yes, Greenland, I know, plan stand Greenland, it's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. But yeah, there, he's writing the sequel. Cool. So, yeah, all right. Okay, <clears throat> Matt, this one is for you. Mm. <laughs> all right. That was the only one I could think of. I know this one's going to be tough. We'll see. These are assigned at random. I did a little dice roll before, we, so we picked up with the order at random. Season two saw no ratings snub. These tween girls returned to their hub, based on the books set in Stony Brook. Stacy's my favorite in the. <laughs> Naya knows this one too. <laughs> Snub, Hub. It's a Netflix show. Oh, All right. Aww. Should we let Naya steal it, Matt? Yeah. Babysitter's Club. A Babysitter's Club. <laughs> oh. Yes. And Stacy is the girl in the Babysitter's Club who has type 1 diabetes. Mm. So, yes. I actually have a t-shirt that says Stacy is my favorite babysitter. But that is the... I, I haven't seen season two. I watched season one. I thought they did a great job with it. Um, you know, her mother, the character, the mother was super nervous. The girl actually had to calm her mom down. And then she asked for like a Gucci designer handbag to carry her stuff with. And the parents were like, yeah, no, it was very cute. It was very cute. <laughs> there you go. All right. So Naya, this one is actually for you. Oh, good. I said, go bigger, go home. Yeah. All right. The bags are the best part. They are. <laughs> All right, Naya, this is our last limerick. Okay. Word of this preview quickly spread. But not for the plot, no. Instead, the trailer showed a pump, visible tech, not just a bump. Is there diabetes in Pixar's turning? So this is a trailer for a movie that isn't out yet. Yes, I've, I've seen the trailer and and all, I, I don't remember the name of the movie, but it's a Pixar movie and the kid's got type, has Maybe we don't know. Diabetes, has don't diabetes know. tech, right? Yes. But I, I, I don't remember the name of the movie. <laughs> All right, rhymes with spread instead. Spread instead. Uh, Pixar's turning. Kyle, do you know? Turn red. Oh, he stole and it. Everybody gets a point for someone else's limerick. It's <laughs> <laughs> turning red, if, if you didn't hear. Yes. <laughs> So I'm really excited about that because during the back and forth, you know, on Twitter and everything else, we said we think it's a pump, we think it's a CGM, we don't know anything about it, right? We don't know. Um, I was able to find somebody at Pixar who said, mm -hmm. get back to me in late November and we'll, we'll hopefully be able to talk about it then. They're going to connect me with somebody on the movie. So I would love to talk to them about that. Yeah. I'm excited about that. A lot of the, there's a lot of representation at Pixar. They're really trying to, it's probably not a main character, it's just somebody in the background, but good stuff. Representation matters, even if it's the tiniest little character that only we <laughs> No. I love it. All right, so everybody got a point. Uh, Naya, you have two points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt, you got three. Kyle, you get five. The dirty secret of Wait, Wait, Don't Poke Me is that everybody wins. So we're going to make a donation Aww. for everybody to Children with Diabetes and for Benny. And I'm really excited about that. Matt, you can help me figure out where we're going to awesome. put it. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll do that. But thank you all so much for joining. Before we wrap it up, um, is there anything that you guys would like to, I mean, I would say promote generally, but just, you know, like to say anybody you want to thank, anything you want to tell the lovely people at Friends for Life who are watching this. I don't mean to put you on the spot, but jump right in. Happy World Diabetes Day. Continue to advocate for yourself and others. Happy World Diabetes Day. I'd also like to thank the Academy <laughs> and all of my friends that voted for me. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. And, you know, Matt, before we do go, can I ask you, you mentioned the scholarship at the very beginning, and we're all fingers crossed for next summer in person. If people are watching, they're perhaps new to Friends for Life and Children with Diabetes, what should they know about either applying or helping with this fund? 
Awesome. Yeah. So um, we are right now planning to be fully back in person in Orlando next July, um, July 5th through 10th at uh, the Coronado Springs Resort at Walt Disney World. Um, this year, as you know, we had a 50% capacity event, which went really well, but we're excited to be at the 2000 plus mark again next year. Um, registration will be opening in mid-December, so keep an eye on the Children wow. with Diabetes website if you want to register. Um, and then in late January, we will open scholarship applications, um, which will be open for two to three months, um, and people can apply, um, and then we can cover anything from registration, which includes like your all your sessions and your food, um, to just room, or you can apply for a full scholarship that covers registration and your hotel room for the week for up to four people for so family of four. And we also do a young adult scholarship as well. So uh, mm -hmm. keep an eye out on those. Um, and if you're like, if you're interested in giving to our scholarship fund, today is the last day of our 100 years of us celebration fundraiser and short story sharing event. Um, you can give today um, at cwd.is slash 100 years and all of the funds that we raise through the um, through our fall campaign that ends today on World Diabetes Day um, cover um, will help cover the cost of Friends for Life Orlando 2022 and go towards our Friends for Life Scholarship Fund. Fantastic. And Naya's cat wonton definitely yes. decided to make it appear. Yeah. Yes. I locked mine in another room and now I feel guilty. I <laughs> try that with my children on occasion, but you know, they always find their way. <laughs> 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 my dog is here somewhere, but has yet to make an appearance. Well, thank you all so much for playing along with our silly game, with our good stuff and our, our well-meaning, you know, trivia and all that fun things that we do. So I really appreciate you all being here. Thanks for you for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. And wait, wait, don't poke me. Bye. 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 <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all so Peace. much. Mm. Hey, hey. hey, some of those questions were hard. They were re they were silly. The Oreo, the first one, was very silly about the blood sugar. But Jeff, as you know, um, if I could just quickly say, I know there's a lot of people here who are thinking about Friends for Life attending next year and learning about it. I love to do this show and this session when it's a session because um, you learn so much good stuff at Trends for Life and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of emotion and there's a lot of learning and there's, you know, diabetes is so serious and it has to be, but we don't have to take ourselves so seriously. And to me, this blows up a lot of my tension and, and helps me really release. So thanks for the opportunity to share it. This will be a regular podcast episode um, in about two weeks Wonderful. before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Wonderful. So just a reminder, I'm getting tons of emails. Please keep them coming. If you'd like to enter to win a prize, Stacy at diabetes-connections.com. And that's all I got. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you, Stacy. This was a, a great sort of final webinar on our fall uh, 2021 Friends for Life uh, week of virtual celebration. Uh, we do have one last uh, meeting, an open Zoom meeting that starts at two. So for those of you who've been hanging around with us since 11, go grab a, a snack, something to drink, and uh, we'll see you uh, in 20 minutes. Thanks, Stacy, And to all of you, have a great World Diabetes Day. Bye-bye.